गौरवाणी प्रचारी ने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी प्रश्यात देश तारी ने जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधा शिव शरी गौर भक्त वृंद जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधा शिवा शरी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे निताय गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बोल निताय गौर हरि बोल जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद निताय गो प्रमानंदे हरि हरि बो जय ओम विष्णु पाद तन्मन सुप्रीपाद कचार्जस्तो तिरस्त्री श्रीमद् एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज प्रभु पाद की जय आनंद कोटि वैष्णव की जय नामाचार्य श्रीधरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवाशाली गौर भक्त की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंडगिरि गोवर्धन की जय वृंदावन धाम की जय नृपदीप धाम की जय जगन्नाथपुरी की जय गंगमयी की जय जमनमयी की जय तुलसी देवी की जय भक्ति देवी की जय समवेत भक्त बृंद की जय 
Hare Krishna. All glory is to the Srila Prabhupada. All glory is to the assembled devotees. All glory is to the assembled devotees. All glory is to the assembled devotees. Go over Primananda. Haribo, Haribo. Thank you, Maharaj. And uh, thank you, Mahesh Pandit Prabhu, for the kirtan. It is Wednesday, September 1st, 2021. We're returning after a short hiatus for observing Janmashtami and Srila Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja. And we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam second canto. Yeah. We're in the ninth chapter. We're starting text number 44 today with His Holiness Jayadvaita Swami. Thanks for being with us, Maharaj. I hope your short hiatus was pleasant. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Tasma idam Bhagavatam Puranam. Dashalakshanam Proptam Bhagavata Praha Prita Putraya Putakrit. Thereupon, the supplementary Vedic literature, Srimad Bhagavatam, which was described by the personality of Godhead and which contains ten characteristics, was told with satisfaction by the father, Brahma, to his son. Om Ajnana Timidantasya Gananjana Shalakaya Shakshurin Miditam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurude Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Shayam Rupa Kada Mayam Bhati Shapadantika Bande Hang Shri Guru Shri Jatapadakamaba Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Shagrajatam Sahagana Raganatan Vatamas Tam Sajiva Sadhaitam Savatutam Pradijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan, Shahagana Lalita, Sri Vishakhan Vitamstra. E Krishna Kuruna Sindho Dina Bandho Jakatvate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostrate. Tapta Kamsana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavane Shri, Prishabhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami, Priye Vansha called the Rupyascha, Kripas and Topia Vacha Patita Nam Pavanebio, Vaishnavebio, Namon Sri Krishna Chaitan Prabhu Nitananda Sri Adwaita Gadatar Shiva Shadi Gaur Bhaktarin Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Tasmai, Idam Bhagavatam, Puranam Dasalakshanam, Proktam Bhagavatam, Proktam Bhagavata, Praha, Prita Putraya, Putakrit. So this Bhagavatam was spoken, uh, Bhagavata, Proktam Bhagavata. It was spoken by the personality of Godhead. And then uh, Praha Prita Putraya Putakrit. Then Putakrit, the Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, spoke this same Srimad Bhagavatam to his son Nardamuni uh, Prita in great satisfaction. Well, let's see what Srila Prabhupada says. Although the Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken in four verses, it has ten characteristics which will be described uh, 
which will be explained in the next chapter. So this 10 characteristics uh, means 10 subject matters. They come up in the first verse of the next chapter. Atra sargo visargas cha sthanam poshanam utayaha manvantare shanukata nirota muktir ashraya. It's said that a Mahapurana has 10 characteristics or subject matters, and that's found here in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And there'll be um, further discussion of that as we go along in the next chapter. Um, sarga, Visarga, Sarga means creation, Visarga means the, uh, or Sarga means the creation by the Lord of the cosmos or the basic in ingredients of material nature. Visarga is sub-creation by the engineer of the universe, uh, Lord Brahma, and so on in this way, 10 subject matters. In the four verses, it is first said that the Lord existed before the creation. And thus the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam includes the Vedanta af aphorism, Janmadhyaya Svetaha. Janmadhyaya Svetaha is the beginning. Yet the four verses in which it is said that the Lord is the root of everything that be, beginning from the creation up to the supreme abode of the Lord, naturally explain the 10 characteristics. So everything's compressed in these four verses or into these four verses. One should not misunderstand by wrong interpretations that the Lord spoke only four verses and that therefore all the rest of the 17,996 verses are useless. The 10 characteristics, as will be explained in the next chapter, require so many verses just to explain them properly. Brahmaji had also advised Narada previously that he should expand the idea he had heard from Brahmaji. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed this to Sri Rupa Goswami in a nutshell, but the disciple Rupa Goswami explained this very elaborately. And the same subject was further expanded by Jiva Goswami, and even further by Sri Vishwanath, uh, Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. We're just trying to follow in the footsteps of all these authorities. So this is uh, the nature of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. It's explained in four verses, or it can be explained in 4,000 or 4 million. And the examples, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains the science of Krishna to Sri the Rupa Goswami in only a few days. Uh, but then uh, Rupa Goswami expanded it into so many books. Uh, Sanat Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami. Jiva Goswami further expanded it. Vishnat Chakravarti Thakur further, Prabhupada further. And there's room for further expansion of this subject matter of Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srimad Bhagavatam is not like ordinary fiction or mundane literature. It is unlimited in strength. How much strength, how much potency does ordinary fiction or mundane literature have? It may be engaging, it may be entertaining, it may be instructive, but uh, the depth of Srimad Bhagavatam is in another category entirely. It's unlimited in strength and however one may expand it according to one's own ability, Bhagavatam still cannot be finished by such expansion. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained the Atmarama verse, Atmarama Chumuniyo, in 64 different ways. And still, he, when he repeated it to Sanatana Goswami, he said, oh, I just thought of another explanation, because Bhagavatam is unlimited. 
each word is Krishna and each and Krishna is unlimited. Srimad Bhagavatam being the sound in representation of the Lord is simultaneously explained in four verses and in four billion verses, all the same. Just as the Lord is smaller than the atom and bigger than the unlimited sky. Such is the potency of Srimad Bhagavatam. Any comments or questions here? Supplementary, does it mean additional to the main? What would be the main? The main is the Vedas, the uh, Shruti Prasthan. The four Vedas are called a Shruti Prasthan. They're the, 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 you can say the main, uh, if you will, the main subject, the main writings. And then the supplements to the Vedas are the Puranas, Mahabharata, uh, Ramayana. In this way, these are supplementary Vedic literatures. But the, as far as we're concerned, the supplementary literature is more rich and enlightening than the Vedas themselves. Because Trigunya Vishaya Veda, the Vedas deal mostly with the three modes of material nature. There's so much direction for karma kandiya activities or uh, speculation, mostly in personal speculation, and worship of different gods, and finally worship of Krishna. But the Vedas don't focus on the personality of Godhead. Therefore, Nard Muni. Uh, Told Vyastev, no wonder you're dissatisfied. Yes, you've compiled this, the Vedas, and you've also written so many supplements, but you haven't directly glorified the personality of Godhead. And that's why you're feeling dissatisfaction. So, therefore, the Mahamuni, Vyastev, um, in his maturity, wrote this. Srimad Bhagavatam, which gives the essence of Vedic knowledge. I hope that's okay. Thank you for asking about that. It's supplements. What does it mean, supplements? Yes, very. Uh, without the supplement, we'd be lost, actually. Just the, the Vedic literature is so vast, and one gets lost. Yam imam pushpitam vahacham. Pravadanti, Avipaschita, those who are inexperienced get lost in the Vedas. There may be Dvivedis, Trivedis, Tretravedis, but without knowledge of Krishna, they're near Vedis. They don't really have transcendental knowledge of the personality of God. So this Bhagavatam comes right to, focuses our attention on the central point of all existence. Satyam Param Dhima, the personality of Godhead, the absolute truth. Thank you for being here. Us, how did the definition of what should be in a Mahapurana become established? I don't know. Um, it's a good question. I don't know the answer. It's, um, the, if I recall, this, this question of Mahapurana is discussed by uh, Jiva Goswami in the Sundarvist. I believe it's there in, in the Tattva uh, Sundarva. And if I remember correctly, he quotes there from authority on, on this point that uh, the Mahapurana will include these things. So from, if that's, if my memory correct, uh, is correct, then this is established in, in Shastra. Any other questions? Maharaj, Maharaj, Maharaj this is to you, Tendu Das here. here. Yes, sir. There was a there sentence or two towards the end of the purport that made me think of something, and perhaps you might want to comment more on it. It says that... 
Yeah. The Srimad Bhagavatam is not like ordinary fiction. And the Bhagavatam still cannot be finished by such expansion. When he said that, it, of course, he's referring to the uh, mundane literature, fiction, and so on. There's only so far you can give explication on it before it just stops. You, you really can't go any deeper into something that's not that deep to begin with. But what that statement reminds me of is when uh, Sadaputa Prabhu was giving a class once on um, the, the intricacy and detail seen in material nature and how if you look at a piece of organic matter, some living organism under a high powered microscope, there's no end to the detail and the intricacy that you see, no matter what power of magnification you, you look. But if you look at something man-made, like a, you know, a part of a car or a computer chip or something, you get down to a certain level of magnification and there's no more detail, there's no more intricacy. You're just looking at a hunk of, of, of metal that came out of a shop somewhere. So when it says the Bhagavatam cannot be finished by any amount of expansion, you go deeper and deeper into it and there's still more and more and more. It's like, uh, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of uh, metaphors for it, but I just, that, that occurred to me in, in, in case you might wanna add, add your own commentary. Well, I like that commentary by Sada Puta Prabhu that um, any power of mag magnification, and yes, it does apply to, to Bhagavatam. As deep as you go, there's always something more to discover, something more to talk about, something more to, to relish. Uh, that's the nature of, of Bhagavatam. From that point of view, it's also a living organism. The, it's not a dead book. It's, it's the personality of Godhead himself, the, the supreme living organism. So uh, there's no, no limit to what you find uh, the deeper you go. Um, there's also a word in the verse, pritam. Um, let's come, come up to that again. Yeah, prita putraya putakrit. The Lord Brahma spoke this, this, this subject matter, with great pleasure to Narad Muni. Um, one thing is that how pleased will the father be if the son asks intelligent, relevant questions of, about Krishna consciousness? Uh, the, you know, children asking something, could you help me with my homework? Could you... Um, get my computer game to work. Could you, but if the son is asking, could you tell me something about Krishna? The parents become so happy, Krishna conscious parents. Um, or as the son grows up, instead of, you know, having other mundane questions, he's asking about Krishna, parents become delighted. So Narada was asking relevant questions. And uh, so, and now Brahma is going to get the opportunity to speak more about Krishna. That was mentioned in connection with the uh, Ajamal Tritra, that the Yamadutas asked Yamaraj about uh, these four unusual men they met. Uh, and essentially asked them over, we thought you were the person in charge of everything. Now it seems that someone has overstepped your order. So what does this all mean? Uh, so they were, Yamaraj was very pleased. He got some opportunity to speak about Krishna Kata. Um, it's not such a common uh, occurrence. So this is the nature of a devotee that he'll, much chitta madgita prana bodhiyanta paraspara tushanti cha ramanti cha. The devotees take pleasure in speaking Bhagavatam, speaking about Krishna. Uh, or taking it another way, if our, if our sound vibrations are mixed and sometimes we're talking about politics and sometimes we're talking about gossip and sometimes we're talking about this and that, when we speak about Bhagavatam, we'll get a pleasure that we don't get from these other things. 
And so we may advance and come to the point that why do I want to talk about this other rubbish? Let's just talk about Krishna. Uh, let's just talk about Krishna. Tato uh, Brahma Jigyasa. Now the real talk can begin. Uh, so, uh, Prita, Prita Mana, one's mind will become uh, satisfied by speaking about Krishna. And that was the experience of Brahma. He'd heard it, and now he got the opportunity to, to speak it, to speak what he directly heard from the Lord, Bhagavata, Proktam Bhagavata, Pra. Uh, he spoke what the Lord spoke. That's another point. That he didn't say, well, glad that you asked, asked me this question. Uh, this is my opportunity to be creative. After all, I'm the creator of the universe, and now I can be creative in, in speaking. I heard something from Krishna, so let me uh, sort of allow my mind to wander around with that. He, Proktam Bhagavata Praha, he spoke that which had been spoken. Prabhupada said, that's our job, to repeat what we've heard from the, the higher authorities. To repeat what we've heard from the higher authorities. We don't have to invent something or speculate or um, anything. Um, we may be very good speakers. We may be very um, simple or even crude. But the... Hmm, essence of it is to speak what we've heard. We may be entertaining or not entertaining. We may speak very eloquently or not so eloquently. But if we speak what's been spoken, what has been spoken by the personality of Godhead, then it has eternal value. Uh, and it will have potency. The, an entertainer may or may not, um, you know, an entertaining class may not be a very enlightening class, but a class in which what the personality of God had spoke is repeated will be enlightening. Prabhupada said such a simple thing uh, to repeat what we've heard. Proptam Bhagavata Praha Evam Brahm pra, Prabhupada. And then we'll feel satisfied. Yes, I got to speak about Krishna. I got to speak about Krishna. And the audience will also, those who are, what is that? Srinvanti, uh, Gayanti, Grinanti, Sadhava. Honest people will appreciate it. Not that you have to be a great orator, not that you have to have a, a sonorous voice, not that you have to be a great entertainer. But if you speak, as the servant of the personality of Godhead, then it will be, it will have potency and that potency will act upon the audience. The audience will become enlightened and will become enlightened by speaking. Srinvatam Shavanam Kirtan, by hearing, by speaking, we all, all make progress. Um, something else? Yes, Maharaj, and also I, I can add um, Srimad Bhagavatam is non-different than Krishna and Krishna is uh, unlimited. So you will always find in depth when you look into that. You know. Yeah, there's not, there's, it's, we don't come to, well, now I've run out, you know, there's nothing more that could possibly be said. Um, there will always be something, something um, it will always be new, uh, even though it's old. Yes. And second thing is, it's spiritual. And the other things are material. So, you know, material is limited. Adhyam Puran Purusham Navayoga Namcha. Krishna is the oldest. And yet he's always uh, like a fresh youth. He doesn't become old. So Bhagavatam also is the oldest. But it's always fresh. Uh, always uh, New in that sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Anything else? Shall we move forward? Okay. 
Narada praha muniye saraswatyastate nirpa jayate brahma paramam vyasaya mitate juse. In succession, O King, the great sage Nard instructed Srimad Bhagavatam unto the unlimitedly powerful Vyasdev, who meditated in devotional service upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, on the bank of the river Sarasati. In the first canto, of Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth chapter, verse 13, Narada instructed the great sage Vyasdev as follows. Ato, ato maha bhaga bhavana mogadrik shuti shava sachirato dhrita vrataha urukramasya kila bandha muktaye samadhi nanusmara tadviceshtitam O oh, greatly fortunate, pious philosopher, your name and fame are universal. And you are fixed in the absolute truth. With spotless character and infallible vision, I ask you to meditate upon the activities of the personality of Godhead, whose activities are unparalleled. So, in the disciplic succession of the Brahma Sampradaya, the practice of yoga meditation is not neglected. But because the devotees are bhakti yogis, they do not undertake the trouble to meditate upon the impersonal Brahma. As indicated here, they meditate on Brahma Parama, or the Supreme Brahma. Brahman realization begins from the impersonal effulgence, but by further progress of such meditation, manifestation of the Supreme Soul, Paramatma realization takes place. And progressing further, realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is fixed. Sri Narad Muni, as the spiritual master of Yastev, knew very well the position of Vyastev. And thus, he certified the qualities of Srila Vyastev as fixed in the absolute truth, with great vow, etc. cetera. Uh, what is that, Suchi Shava? Uh, Shruti, Shruti Shava, Satcharito, Dhritavrta. Narad advised meditation upon the transcendental activities of the Lord. Impersonal Brahma has no activities, but the personality of Godhead has many activities and all such activities are transcendental without any tinge of material quality. If the activities of the Supreme Brahma were material activities, then Narada would not have advised Vyasadeva to meditate upon them. So this is practical. The great spiritual master, Nard Muni, is not going to advise the author of all the Vedic literature to meditate on something, uh, on some fairy stories, on something fanciful or, um, or on something material. He, satyam param dhimahi. he advises Vyastev to meditate upon the absolute truth. And as we find in Srimad Bhagavatam, that absolute truth is not impersonal and not lacking activities. Among other things, an absolute truth without activity would be so boring. You know, just formless, shapeless, inactive, inert, absolute truth. It's like so dull as far as devotees are concerned. As far as the Brahmavadis are concerned, it's wonderful. The unlimited absolute truth. 
but to actually understand the unlimited nature of the absolute truth, one has to realize its unlimited form, qualities, pastimes, and so on. Param Brahma is Lord Sri Krishna, as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. In the 10th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, when Arjun realized the factual position of Lord Krishna, he addressed Lord Krishna in the following words. Param Brahma, Param Tama, Pavitram, Paramang Pavan, Purushan Shashvatam Tivyam, Adi Devam Majam Vipum Ahus Tam Rashaya Sarve Devar Shir Naradastata Asito Devalo Vyasa Swayam Chaiva Pravishime Arjun summarized the purpose of the Bhagavad Gita by his realization of Lord Sri Krishna and thus said, my dear personality of Godhead, you are the supreme absolute truth, the original person in the eternal form of bliss and knowledge. And this is confirmed by Narada, Asita, Devala, and Vyasdev. And above all, you yourself have also personally confirmed it. When Vyasdev fixed his mind in meditation, he did it in bhakti yoga trance and actually saw the Supreme Person with Maya, the, the illusory energy in contraposition, and that is in, in the background. Uh, bhakti yoga manasi sangyak pranihite male apashat um, purusham purnam Maya Chattapashram. As we've discussed before, the Lord's Maya or illusion is a representation, a representation of the Lord. Because Maya has no existence without the Lord. Darkness is not independent of light. Without light, no one can experience the contraposition, darkness. Without a light, you don't, there's no shadow to be seen. We see uh, shadows on a sunny day, you see the shadows. At night, there are no shadows to be seen because there's no light. Uh, so without light, one can't experience darkness. So without Krishna, there's no question of mind. However, this maya or illusion cannot overcome the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but stands apart from it, a pashram. Therefore, perfection of meditation is realization of the Personality of Godhead, along with its transcendental activities. Meditation on the impersonal Brahma is a troublesome business for the meditator, as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. Klesho tikatara stesham, klesho tikatara stesham avyakta sakta chetasam. We may sometimes forget if sometime before Krishna consciousness we tried to meditate. Uh, what did we meditate on? What did we meditate? What is this meditation? If one seriously tries to meditate, what does one meditate on? Now you can meditate on a candle or a mandala or a doorknob or this or that. But how, how, how far does that go? And even if we try to go deep and somehow or other experience something sublime or transcendental, it's very difficult because 
the we don't, first of all we don't know where to go and if we think of the absolute as something beyond form beyond qualities beyond then the mind can't even go there there's nothing for the mind to hook on to the there's there's no object of, of meditation so it becomes a sort of a vague affair and even to the point where some so-called yogis advise that that's what meditation is a transcendental meditation means to allow your mind to wander wherever it will, and then it will somehow find something uh, and come to a higher platform. But that's not the recommendation of the Vedic literature. Uh, that's called bull gathering, not just mind wandering. This mind wandering, but. Uh, so that's one thing. Well, the mind's going to wander. All right, just let it wander. Or all right, focus the mind. But what can I focus it on? If if there's really no no variety, if all variety is Maya, well, I don't want my mind to be focused on Maya. So I have to withdraw it. Not this. Not that. Not this. Not that. Not this. Not that. And then it's all. Everything's Maya, not, not this, not that, not this, not that. Um, one can advance this way, but it's so troublesome. Klesha, klesha means um, struggle, trouble. It's so troublesome. Klesha adikatara, troublesome and more troublesome. Avyakta sakta, if one is attached to something, unmanifest, impersonal. Then progress, meditation, becomes so difficult. Uh, so in bhakti yoga, meditation means to meditate on uh, satyam param, the supreme truth, but not an impersonal supreme truth. Om namo bhagavate vasudeva, to meditate upon the personality of God. And that's described, Janma. Uh, these are all qualities, Janma, Ajanma, Adi, Asya, Yata. That's a quality. To be the beginning of everything, to be the origin of everything is a, quali a quality. Janma, Yasya, Yata. Janma, Yasya, Yata, Anvaya, Yata. Janma, Yasya, Yata, Anvaya, <laughs> oh my goodness. Itaratash. Hmm? Hmm? Tell me again. Itaratash. Itaratash Chartesh. Yes, thank you. Shanmad yes, yad yaton vayad itaratash Chartesh. A big yes, right? All of these are qualities of the absolute truth. He's independent, Swarat. He's realized directly and indirectly. Tene Brahma Hridaya Adi Kaviye. He enlightened Brahma from within the heart. All of these are topics in which one can go on and on and on. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati did that. And we hear that in Dhaka uh, for what month, three months, he simply explain this one verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Yasyata. So this, this is the nature of, of Krishna. Uh, Prabhupada said the sky, you know, if, it, if you have a sky that's really cloudless, there's nothing, no variety in it, just the blue sky. How much can you fix your attention on that? I'll meditate on the sky, I'll meditate on the sky. There's, there's, you know, you'll give up after a while, you say it. <laughs> but uh, Prabhupada said, a little child you can think of on and on and on. Uh, the, the, how the child is smiling, how the child is playing, how the child is speaking, how the child is crawling. Um, on and on and on, one can go on. And, and speaking about it also, how much can you say about the sky? It's blue. 
it's vast. But even if you say that much, now you're going beyond uh, the, you're transgressing the principle that I won't speak about any qualities. That means these are qualities, it's blue, it's vast. So even the impersonalists who speak of the absolute truth by saying it's unknowable, it's ineffable, it's infallible, it's all pervading. They're, they're speaking about qualities still. They're speaking about qualities. They can't get away from it. Um, even if they say it's not this, it's not that, that's also the qual quality, the quality of not being this, the quality of not being that. These are all, uh, you know, that's indirect. Uh, it's indirect, but still indirectly. These are qualities. So the devotee surrenders. Yes, why should I avoid the qualities of the absolute truth? Let me dive into the qualities of the absolute truth. His qualities, his pastimes, his names, his forms, his abode, his entourage. These are all attractive for the devotee. And he takes pleasure in hearing these things and describing these things. Srila Prabhupada told the story once in my presence in, in Boston, in the suburb of Boston, he was telling how he met his Guru Maharaj. And yeah, his Guru Maharaj uh, remarked, this boy likes to hear. He noted it, that when so many devotees went to on pilgrimage to the Shesha Shai Vishnu Mandir, Srila Prabhupada thought, what will I do? This Shesha Jai Mandir, let me hear Guru Maharaj. And so he stayed back. And his Guru Maharaj remarked, This boy likes to hear. And Srila Prabhupada said, Because I was enthusiastic about hearing, now I'm enthusiastic about um, speaking or preaching. So Shravanam Kirtan, we hear, and that hearing gives us inspiration for speaking. And in this way, Anandam Bhuti Bhakti, the ocean of bliss increases. Yovan Ananda asks, what is the taste that the impersonalist is deriving from attempting to understand the impersonal nature of the absolute truth? Well, the, this is the absolute truth, so there is something there. Even the, the, what would you say, even the effulgence of, of the personality of Godhead is, is not nothing. Um, Brahma, Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavaniti. So this Brahma is a feature of the absolute truth and therefore something attractive is there. Something attractive is there. But I don't really know the details. I, I don't really know the details. Some, just like, if, well, I don't have to give my own concocted examples, but there's, there's some place and you've heard that it's nice and you don't really know anything about it. All, all you know is that it's nice. So somehow or other, you want to go there. But if you find out what's really going on there, it's got this, it's got that, it's got this, it's got that. And then you're really, wow, can't wait to get there. Uh, then you really get a taste. Otherwise, it's 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 wonderful, or it's 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 beyond description. There's also something there. It's attractive that the mystery of that absolute truth. The there's there's some sense that that this is um, higher, that this is greater, that this is all encompassing. Um, it's not nothing. It's it's, it's truth. But it's truth only realized only in the preliminary feature. If Brahma is so attractive, how much more attractive is the Paramatma? And if Paramatma is so attractive, how much more attractive is the personality of Godhead? But on. Praveen says, certainly moksha would attract 
since it gives relief from birth, death, unless one comes to bhakti. That's also a point, yes, that uh, just relief is attractive. You know, if you if you have a fever or something, then you think, oh, if only I could get free of this fever. And then when the fever comes down and you, you're back to normal, you feel, oh, whew, wow, that was just relief. You, you, you know, you haven't gotten any real life yet. You're not really doing anything. You're not just relief. Just relief. So relief is, itself is a kind of uh, pleasure. Um, moksha. Yes. I would feel such relief if I weren't being beaten at every turn by the material energy. And so that, yes, that's an attractive feature. That's an attractive. And the, therefore the the impersonalists are, they're interested in that. Let me get moksha. But they didn't. I told this story, I think, before, that on Padayatra, maybe we were in Rajasthan, we visited a, a Jain temple. And one of the priests very kindly took us on tour inside the temple. And um, on the altar, they had the Tirtankars, who were the, the saints in the Jain tradition. And they're depicted as being uh, exceedingly austere yogis. They're sitting in lotus posture with emaciated bodies and obviously undergoing severe austerity. So <laughs> after we toured the temple, uh, we were talking to the priest and I don't know that much about the Jain um, path. So I was asking him, what was the purpose for which these uh, Tirtankars were undergoing such austerities? And he said that it was for moksha, for liberation. And just imagine for all of that, for that exalted goal, they, they were undergoing so much tapasya. And then I asked him, Moksh ke baad kya hai? After Moksh, what is there? What's next? And he said, Moksh ke baad? Kuch nahi. After Moksh, nothing. That's it. <laughs> so this is the impersonal idea that there's, there's a, there is freedom from existence, from material existence. There is moksha. But after moksha, they don't know what comes next. It probably gives the example of that moksha is like um, you're in the hospital. And when they finally cure the disease, that's uh, moksha, a freedom from disease. But if you just stay lying in the hospital hospital bed as a convalescent, uh, then what's what is that? Prabhupada said, real life begins when again you can eat, again you can walk, you can have sex, you can do everything. Uh, so that's real life. Otherwise, just staying in the hospital hospital bed as uh, a person free from disease, that's not real life. So real life means bhakti yoga, to be engaged in the devotional service of Krishna. Yes, Atina has her hand up. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Found about Pranam. So happy to see that you are in good energy. We missed you very much on Jamaski. Um, I, I just wanted to add commentary. I've attained moksha. 
If, oh, yes. Oh, yes. You, you, oh wait, no, no. Yes, you are still walking. That's right, but you're not maybe, I guess, fully, fully healed. But you, you sound wonderful. And thank you for the effort to do today. Um, I, I, it's, if you brought up Jainism, I, I guess I just thought I would add, since I'm assuming most of us here don't know, but I was chatting with another fellow devotee who came to Krishna consciousness. Oh, I was chatting with a fellow devotee who is now in Krishna consciousness, but whose family, um, who was brought up Jain, and her parents are Jain. And I'm curious what philosophy was and it almost sounds a little ridiculous and I'm, I'm, you know when I when the way she told me hope no offenses but and I'm sure it's something more elaborate but um in essence they think moksha is um it's a place where there's a mountain in a, in a heavenly planet and there's a lamp at the top of the mountain and moksha is merging into that lamp on top of the mountain on a heavenly planet. So their goal is getting the lamp. So I thought that was actually very interesting. Um, but supposedly that's the philosophy of what moksha mm. is for us. Mm. Of course, I'm sure that giant philosophers and theologians have described their path in a more in a deeper way and, and so on. Um, you know, you ask a practitioner of almost any spiritual path what it is, and if he's not very experienced, you get some kind of semblance of, of what it is. But as far as we, we understand, I think you've got the essence of it, uh, that it seems that there's something impersonal at the end. You merge into something, you, uh, yeah. Certainly, they're not saying, oh, well, it's the, the name, the form, the qualities, the pastimes, the, um, all of these things. So, yeah. And then this is basically what we find everywhere, uh, that either there's material life or there's some sort of impersonal version of, of spiritual life to, to be in, in tune with the absolute essence to, you know, this, whatever, you know, fancy language you have, it comes to this point that there's some impersonal entity with whom we want to be in communion or merge or be part of or uh, be in what, harmony with or whatever. Um, but it's an impersonal conclusion. Uh, Either there's absolutely nothing or there's a, an entity uh, beyond words, beyond form, beyond qualities, beyond all activities, beyond, 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 beyond. Um, and that's true, beyond material form, beyond material qualities, beyond material activities. But we don't know the other side of it. Srila Prabhupada gave the example. You're in a movie theater and you're seeing the screen. You're seeing all the activities and people and everything. And then you look back and you realize that this is just a projection. That there's not really people there. There's not, that all these activities are coming from a projection booth. And if you go all the way back, it all comes to this one little point of light. And that's where the impersonalists go. That this is all Maya, what we're seeing here. So Tamasi Ma, get out of this uh, illusion and Jyotirgama, come to the, the light. That's their final point. But if they were to go further, they would see that that light is uh, it's in itself not the source of what's being projected. Um, just from light, you don't get all those varieties. But on the other side of the, of the light, there's, there's a film strip where the, uh, the people and the 
activities and everything are present. So you have to go beyond that point of the, the final light from which everything emanates and see on the other side. Otherwise, where have all these varieties come from? How are there, there are all these varieties in, in a light that's supposed to have no varieties? So when we go beyond the, beyond the light, then we come to the varieties of the absolute truth. Prabhupada gave the example or explained it in terms of a circle that Maya is, uh, half the circle, 180 degrees. But the, the reality is on the other side. Uh, the reflection of the tree is in the water, but the real tree is standing on the bank of the water. And Krishna consciousness means to come to that real tree or the ultimate reality of, of which or of whom everything we see is reflected. Thank you. So thank you for, for that. A light on a mountain. I want to know what's going on in the rest of the mountain. Yeah. Well, we're also interested in a mountain, but not just a, a vague mountain. We're interested in a particular mountain known as Giri Raj Govardhan. Jai. Antaya Madhurya Bala, Haridasa Varna, Yad Ramakrishna, Sharanas, Parasha, Pramod. Manam Tanoti Sago Ganyos Tayyat Pani Asuya Vasakanda Rakanda. All wonderful activities are going on. All right. I think we can stop here. Thank you all once again for your association for your contributions mahesh pandit prabhu haridas prabhu tina to supriya everyone well there's haridas all right thank you all again Hare krishna all glories to shiva prabhupada Jai. Hare krishna Jai. thank you maharaj Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. So much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Advaita Maharaj Ki Jai. Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Or Primanande. Arrivo, arrivo.